wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the, world. in the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host. Chris Voss. Hi, folks. It's Voss here from the Chris Voss Show.com. The Chris Voss Show.com. We certainly appreciate you guys tuning in. Thanks for being here. We really appreciate it. Hey, folks, this is a quick break in from the show. Hey, be sure to check out my new courses at Chris Voss Leadership Institute.com. That's Chris Voss Leadership Institute.com forward slash courses or you can just click the courses tab you can see we've got new courses up for how to start a podcast and uh, video training that can get you up to date on everything we're doing of course my speaking my coaching and everything else but be sure to check out the new course that we have up for starting your own podcast after 13 years i'm kind of sharing some of the secrets of what i know so be sure to check that out at chrisvossleadership.com forward slash courses Today, we have an amazing guest on the show as we're going to be sharing with and talking to. She's the author of the new book, Grace Under Fire, that just came out today, July 19th, 2022, by Julie Garwood. It's book 14 of 14 of her Buchanan Renard McKenna series, and she's going to be talking to us about her new book and everything that goes into it. She is the author of numerous New York Times bestsellers, the most recent Wired landed at number two with over 36 million copies in print. Her novels take you from the rugged clans of the medieval Scotland to the mind of a modern day computer hacker, all with her signature humor blended with good helpings of romance and success. Welcome to the show, Julie. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And thanks for inviting me. And thanks for coming. It's an honor to have you on the show. Congratulations on the new book. Give us a .com or wherever you want people to find you on the interwebs. My website is just juliegarwood.com. But Facebook, it would be facebook.com slash Julie Garwood. Real simple. There you go. There you go. Yeah. So is this is a book in a series. Is that correct? It is, but it's a standalone, too. You don't need to know the other. You could just start with this one, and if you want to read the other after you finish it, then the main character is Michael Buchanan. Mm -hmm. He has a lot of brothers and two sisters, so if they're interested, they could just pick another brother and read that story. Oh. So, Chris, I was asked a couple of times, how do you keep them all straight? Well, I'm from a large family, and I can't imagine not knowing who they are, you know? <laughs> I I like writing about big families. Uh-huh. Yeah. What? And I like having everybody have an opinion. So, uh -oh. yeah. I imagine with large families, there are a lot of people with a lot of opinions, aren't there? Oh, yeah. But when I was growing up, we sat around the dining room table to do homework, and there was a lot of chaos. And I learned early to block all that out when I work, which is good because now there's always something going on, and I can, the louder the better. I don't ever want to learn to write in silence because, you know, you can't control that. And when I am alone, I turn the television on and blast it, and then I go to work. Wow. Yeah. So you can listen to TV and work at the same time, huh? I block it out. I don't know what's really going on on the television. It's just huh. no way. <laughs> That's really interesting. That's a that's an interesting writing sort of thing. So what motivated you want to add this to the series and write this book? Well, I had come up with the idea for the first one, the Buchanan, and I had been writing historical romance with the suspense. Mm -hmm. But this one story, I couldn't get it to work in a historical setting. I was, I had gone to London with my older sister, Cookie, that's what we call her. And she couldn't wait, neither could I. It was our first trip. But she made me promise that we would go to Mass every day. Mm. Devout Catholic. Anyway, I promised. And by the time we got to London, we didn't sleep at all on the plane. We were kind of punchy. 
but there was a church nearby and there was a service. So we went and uh, the sermon that the priest gave was really kind of, I shouldn't say this, but it was kind of funny. He got to the, he, it was the lesson of the prodigal son. Mm. But when he got to what I would call the punch of it or the punch line, he just stopped. And then he said, but I know you know. And the congregation, they are all nodding. So then he started another story like the prodigal son. And when he got to the lesson we should learn, he stopped again. And he said, but I know you know, I know you know. Well, I could resist. I leaned over to Cookie and said, I don't know. And that made her laugh. And so then she got up and moved because I was, you know, not paying attention. And I'm sitting there by myself, and I noticed the confessional against the wall with this red velvet curtain. And I thought, I wonder if you know the sense that this priest must hear, and that led to a scene, what if somebody confessed, but it was a sin they were going to commit. Oh. And that was the beginning of the book Heartbreaker. Wow. And it was a Buchanan, the first one. So I, I seem to know from one thing what the whole book is. And that's what I do for some reason, you know, with which is great yeah. that I see that. But I don't know. That's how the mind works, I guess. That's pretty awesome. You So you can confess to pre-sin? I didn't know that. I should just I should just go pre-sin. Oh, yeah. Bless me, Father, for I sin. But what if it's for I will sin? Well, of course, you're not going to get absolution. But then I made it more complicated, and that was fun to do, too. That sounds, that sounds very interesting as a premise. So tell us about the new book. Give us at least uh, some teasing insight to what happens in this new book and what uh, course it takes. Well, Grace Isabel McKenna goes to Boston for a reunion and then on to Scotland to get her signed papers for her inheritance. And the opening line is, Grace Isabel McKenna had a hundred things to do today. Killing someone wasn't one of them. Mm. And that's what this story is about and how that trauma follows her. And Michael, who was a former Navy SEAL, he's the Buchanan, by the way, he is an attorney. He goes with her. And it's kind of a, there's a lot of humor in this book. But, and, you know, I don't want to write stories about serial killers or psychopaths because I think especially today it's more fun to smile mm -hmm. and I will always do a happy ending no matter what. I have a, I've made a vow. I only kill bad people and I guess they have to be really bad. But um, anyway, I that's how I look at life right now. You only kill bad people. Oh, fun character. She really is, and she sings, and then she, she becomes what they say is an overnight sensation. But that story is fun, too, that next is then. At the end, they end up together, and that's good. Well, that's good. So it kind of has a happy wrap-up at the end. Uh, yeah. Were there some of the, do you, do you usually write thinking maybe of some characters and from Hollywood and different things? I'm sorry, when I didn't you, to get that. Do you sometimes imagine your characters being played by Hollywood actors? Maybe if this gets converted to movies or something of that nature? Well, For the Roses, which is a historical that I wrote, became a Hallmark Hall of Fame. Oh, wow. And it's nice to say it was the highest rated movie of the season. They mm -hmm. were very pleased with it. But I don't know. I write the book. I don't picture, I did write a screenplay. I just never given it to anyone. And I've written a couple of what I call kids books, but they're actually YA young adults. Mm -hmm. When I started writing, Chris, I didn't have 
a notion of what these categories were. I had gone back to school. I had three children and I worked. So I worked in my husband's office and my routine, I would get up at 4.15 every day and ride until 7. Then I would get the kids up for school and I'd get dressed and take them to school, come home and get stuff and then go to work in an office. So the only time I could ride was then. Mm. And then I also took two days a week to finish at Avila College. I was a history major starting out. Mm. And um, I wrote historical. Wow. Anyway, kind of gotten off track. Do I picture Hollywood people? No, I don't. I just, you know, whatever they do, they're the ones doing that, whoever the screenplay writer is. Mm-hmm. Well, it's uh, it's it's kind of interesting. Some people, I, I don't think many people, authors in an interview think of that. But I, you know, some people, you know, they kind of set up for the screen, you know, screenwriting or set up for, you know, the it's so amazing different things get bought. But that was cool that one got bought by Hallmark. That's pretty awesome. Now, um, do you know who the main star was? Jennifer Gardner. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. The, uh, do you, do you, are there any characters in your book that you took from maybe people that you know, or? In each book. Mm-hmm. And trust me, I'll never run out of them. In this one, she is a horrible driver. And that's a, she just never gets better. And when I, and say, but when my daughter was learning to drive, and I thought, oh my God, she could never get a license. Well, that, you know, she's a great driver, but it was that first starting out that was kind of funny. And that's in the book. I also, I hate to drive, but starting out, I just couldn't do the parallel parking. I could do a lot of things when you're 16. Huh? So I don't know. That's one. I'm trying to think what other flaws right now is what. But yeah. And people I know who eventually people who think that they're superior to other people. I know you know people like that, ninety two, and it's bad thing and they go in. Yeah. I to give their one up too, you know what I mean? Which is fun. Yeah, I mean, people just, they just don't get it. Is there any stories or scenarios you want to tease out that's in the new book that you think readers might be, would like? I think they're going to like Goblin. Mm-hmm. Because I always end up going back there, at least as an historical and in a couple of the contemporary. And you learn a lot about the area they're in, which is up at the Highlands. I went there and it's just the most beautiful place. Mm. I hard even to describe. It's like utopia for me. And so they'll learn a lot about that and the people there who are very interesting and colorful. They're like the Irish. So, and the competition between them is fun. There's a character in the book, Xavier, who is a famous singer. And he goes by the initials XO, which he doesn't like, but it caught on. And he's a mega star. Huh? And he sees a video of Isabel and asks her to perform with him. And then you learn about the where they are in Boston that happens and going out on stage. And he's really charismatic. And I think he's going to be the next book after this one because oh. uh, he's from Ireland started singing when he was a teenager I don't know he kind of reminds me of Bono you know really I guess there are a lot of comparisons to people that I admire that's interesting that's interesting it reminds you of Bono the singer from U2 because it's kind of he's from Ireland too and all that and all that stuff. he is and it's all the good that he does with the band too, you know, with their earnings and the people they have helped and all. And I don't know. He's someone to be admired. I don't want a hero you wouldn't admire. That's uh, true. And I 
like I said, I want a villain to be someone who and needs to come up, so to speak. Mm. That definitely makes all the difference. Huh? Anything more? Anything more you want to tease out on the book? Oh, uh, let me think. Well, I don't know. I didn't. I was going to write more about Navy Seals and decided those books have been done. And so no, I, I didn't. It was fun just learning about Scotland. I hope that people come away smiling. You know, I get letters or not letters, emails back. Too many, in fact, from women who are going to team up, which breaks my heart. Oh, wow. But say, Things like you got me through it. You, I read the same book over and over, and you say, "Wow, you know." But that's the whole point. You want to make an impact, no matter what you do in life. Mm -hmm. And I think, as an author, that's that's pretty cool. That definitely is cool. I mean, it, it makes all the difference. It's interesting how we make an impact in other people's lives, isn't it? It is. You know, I didn't learn to read until I was almost 11. Mm -hmm. I toppled out when I came back. My kids, because I was out a long time, the kids in my class were already in group. We were birds back then. You had the Blue Jays and you had the Robins, et cetera. And I, I didn't catch up. And it wasn't until I was 11 that my mom realized, you know, that I didn't have a clue. And they sent me to St. Teresa's Academy and grabbed a sister there who was there for the summer, Sister Elizabeth. And she taught me to read. Wow. And she made quite an impact. I named my daughter after her. But once I learned to read, I was never without a book. And I think I've always been a writer. You know what really did it? Steinbeck wrote a book, and it's about the bowl and the depression, and there's a scene in it that I was reading about their, they get in a wagon, and they're making their way to California, and hot, you know, very descriptive. When I finished that scene, I had to get a glass of water, mm -hmm. and I thought, this author made me thirsty from the scene. Wow. And I, that just kind of overwhelmed me. And I thought, I want to be able to do that, you know? So that's kind of my side goal. Wow. It's expected as a reader, I guess. There you go. Well, I think people yeah. are going to be excited to see your book and read it and uh, order it up wherever the fine books are sold. Anything more you want to touch on or tease out before we go? I love hearing from people and I hope, I really hope they like this book. It's kind of like once it comes out, you wring your hand. I don't read reviews. Mm -hmm. uh, you could have 20 awesome reviews and one negative and guess what you focus on? You, you know, focus the negative. On the so I just don't, I like hearing from people. Yeah. And if they tell me something was wrong, I appreciate it. But, there you go. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Well, you know. You're oh, yeah. People are people are fickle and funny. Like, I, I think the only bad review that I have on my book is someone who thought I was someone else. And they're like, I thought this was a different person. And you're like, well, why would you write a bad review if you, just because you, you know, there's someone who has a similar name to me. Like, why write a bad review? Because you. Because you're stupid and you don't know who the oh, hell you're God, the hell's the book wrong, reading. Wrong yeah. Author. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've had it on my podcast too, where people I, I've had I've had it's there's only one. And it's one person who wrote a bad review on the they do write a bad review in the podcast. They actually liked it. They said it was hilarious. They only gave it two stars though. And they said, I thought this podcast was hosted by someone else with a similar name. And I was like, seriously? Like <laughs> Oh, that's not like, fair. That's like me ordering, like, I don't know, vitamins on Amazon. And instead of vitamins, it's like, I don't know, let's throw some out, magnesium. And then I'm angry at the magnesium order because I'm stupid enough to not order the right product. And, and I go write a bad review on it and stuff. So that's it. Yeah. I think I still got like two stars on Amazon. I don't remember, but it was just really funny. It's like, I thought this book was written by somebody else, but you know. 
I, I'm, I'm going to give it a subpar review because uh, even though it's, you know, good or hilarious or whatever, you know, but it's, you can't win sometimes really with no, trolls. No. And that whenever it, the reviews are anonymous, that's yeah. good, you know? Yeah. And there's a lot of people that they just want to take you down a peg because they, they're sometimes competitors, right? I, yeah. I, when I, when I was lucky enough to hit number one on the time and there were some people who just were angry, it was as though I took it from them, which makes absolutely no sense. Oh, they That's thought that it was their story? You. Your name wasn't the same. And they expected that crazy. Yeah. There's a, there's 7 billion people in the world. Like anybody could be living the same scenario, just randomly by accident, you know, this pot that's in your book or uh, sub sub parts of the book. You're like, uh, you use my name, Bob. Clearly you wrote about me. <laughs> <laughs> I fear yet. You, you can't win sometimes. You know, I've been on you. We've been on YouTube for 12 years. Uh, there's some people, they just have nothing but hate to spew and ugliness and nothing positive to say. And I don't know. I just imagine they're all angry people who live in their mother's basement and don't have a life. That's, that's how I just imagine it. The beautiful part about like our shows or like uh, YouTube though, is we still get paid if you watch it. So if you want to write an angry, hateful comment that actually gives the, the show more juice and stuff. So, you know, it's, if you want to pay me, you know, I, we, we, I don't know, we make a penny or two off of a comment or review. If you want to pay me to throw hate at me, well, I still got paid. So it's in my bank account. That's how I look at it. Hey, I'm going to write a great review. <laughs> Down the dice and stubborn junk. Thank you. Thank you. We really appreciate it. We, we've been doing the show for 12 years. So thank you. If you, if you get a chance. 12 years. Wow. Yeah. I think it'll be 13 in August, but it's been wonderful to have you on the show. Thank you for coming by. Give us your dot com so people can find you on the internet, please. Okay. And simply Darwin.com. There you and go. Book it at Facebook.com slash Julie Garwood. There you go. Very awesome. And thank you very much for coming on the show, Julie. We certainly appreciate it. It was a pleasure to meet your acquaintance. Yep. I enjoyed this. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Julie. And everyone, go out and order her new book. It's available on Amazon or wherever fine books are sold. Remember, just go into those fine bookstores. Don't go in the alleyway bookstores because uh, you, know, you might need a tetanus shot if you go in there. Grace Under Fire. It's available today, July 19th, 2022. Order it up so you can be the first one on your book club or block to take and get it. Julie Garwood. Thanks for tuning in. Be good to each other. Stay safe. And we'll see you guys next time.